oh my gosh, that was an earthquake. It felt like a 5.5 on the Richter scale. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? Hi everybody, welcome to ADUSD Storytime Science. Today's story is called Earthquakes by Franklin Branley and illustrated by Richard Rosenblum. It's read today by ABCI explainer Ainsley Wilkins. This is a story about the history and science of earthquakes. As you listen to the story, pay attention how devastating earthquakes used to be and how we've improved our building to be better to better withstand the big one. Thanks. Earthquakes by Franklin M. Branley, read by Ainsley Wilkin. Parts of the earth are always moving. That's hard to believe, but they are. The movements are so small and so slow, we usually cannot feel them. Whole mountains move. Big sections of a continent like North America can move. Even whole continents move. Right now, North America and Europe are moving apart. They move slowly, only as fast as your fingernails grow. So we don't feel the motion. When parts of the Earth move quickly, there may be an earthquake. Every day, there are at least a thousand earthquakes on our planet. Most are small. But each year, there are few earthquakes large enough to knock down buildings. The strength of an earthquake can be measured. We use something called the Richter scale, named after C.F. Richter, an American scientist. Anything that measures less than two is a small quake, and eight or higher is a very big one. Every earthquake has a center. That's where it all begins. Parts of the earth move up and down or sideways and make waves that spread out and go through the whole Earth. They are called seismic waves. The word comes from seismos, a Greek word meaning to shake. Scientists all over the world measure the waves on seismometers. Here's an experiment to help you understand how waves work. Hold a yardstick near your ear. Have someone tap lightly on the other end. You can hear the sound clearly because a wave went through the yardstick. Waves travel through rock, the way sound travels through wood. There are also up and down waves, like the waves in a rope when you flip it up and down. This kind of wave also goes through the earth. We live on the outer part of earth. It is called earth's crust. In some places, the crust is 30 or 40 miles thick. If earth were an apple, the crust would be only as thick as the skin of the apple. Most earthquakes occur in the crust. Large sections of the Earth's crust are always moving. Sometimes two sections push against each other. The place where they meet is called a fault. When the sections cannot pass, the Earth bends and buckles. Suddenly, the bend releases, and a whole section may move four or five feet at once. That's what happened 12 miles below the surface of Mexico in 1985. The seismic waves from the earthquake center were strong enough to topple buildings in Mexico City 220 miles away and kill several thousand people. The quake measured 8.1 on the Richter scale. Sometimes two sections of the crust scrape alongside each other. That makes a fault too. The San Andreas Fault is a crack in the earth that runs north and south for hundreds of miles in California. In 1906, there was an earthquake along a section of the San Andreas Fault. In seconds, the crust on the west side of the fault moved 20 feet. San Francisco and the area around the city shook and trembled. Fire started and most of the city burned down. Most earthquakes occur along the shores of the Pacific Ocean, where the crust moves a lot. Japan has about 7,000 quakes a year. Luckily, most are small. There are volcanoes in this part of the world, too. Earthquakes often occur in places where there are volcanoes. Melted rock deep under the earth pushes upward, making the area shake and rumble. These are warnings that a volcano may erupt or that there may be a big earthquake. In southern Europe, there are several volcanoes. There are also many earthquakes. In Polzuoli, Italy, a small town not far from Mount Vesuvius, there were 4,000 quakes in one year. Mount Vesuvius is a volcano that has erupted from time to time for several thousand years. In 1939, a big fault opened up in the bottom of the sea, 
causing an earthquake just off the coast of Chile in South America. Water rushed into the opening. After it was filled, water kept rushing toward the fault. The water piled high, making a huge wave that traveled toward the shore. The wave was a wall of water called a tsunami, a Japanese word. People ran to the hills to escape, but a landslide caused by the quake swept them back into the sea. This was a big undersea earthquake. In a small quake, dishes rattle, ceiling lights swing. The ground jiggles a bit as if a big truck were going by. It's all over in a few seconds. During a big earthquake, many buildings fall down. There are also fires. Pipes that carry gas to homes are broken. A spark may set the gas afire. Sometimes firefighters can't fight the flames because water pipes have broken. During an earthquake, dams may break too. Rivers may be blocked by landslides, so there is often flooding in an area of an earthquake. In many parts of the world where there are big earthquakes, new buildings are made of steel instead of wood. They are built where the ground is solid, so seismic waves will not knock them down. Old bridges and dams are made stronger with extra steel and concrete. In 1989, there was a serious earthquake near San Francisco. It was the worst in the area since 1906. 67 people were killed, bridges and roadways were damaged, and many buildings were destroyed. Because of the way it was built, the famous Golden Gate Bridge swayed in the quake, but it did not collapse. Earthquakes happen without any warning. However, scientists are working to find ways to predict quakes. They use satellites to measure even the smallest motion along the faults. These small motions can often become larger. It is important to know what to do in case of an earthquake. If you are outside, stay away from buildings, trees, power lines, or anything else that could fall on you. If you can, go to an open space, like a ball field or a parking lot. If you are inside, stay there. Get under a strong table or bed, or stand in a doorway. Keep away from windows. If you are in school, your teacher will tell you what to do. Wherever you are, remember, there may be smaller shocks after the main quake. These aftershocks could cause more damage. People who live in places where there have been earthquakes should always keep a supply of plastic bottles of drinking water. They should also have a supply of canned food, a flashlight, a fire extinguisher, and a battery-powered radio. The crust of our planet is always moving, so we will continue to have earthquakes. Most of them, fortunately, will be small ones. We hope there is never a big earthquake near you, but if there is, you know there are things that you can do to protect yourself and other people. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Swearingen. I'm Gavin. And I'm Eli. And welcome to another episode of AVUSD Storytime Science. In the book Earthquakes, you learned about the history and the science of earthquakes. As you saw in the story, Earth is broken up into many layers, and the outermost layer is the crust. Is this a drawing of it? Yes, Eli. So you have the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and then the outermost layer is the crust. This crust is broken up into tectonic plates. These tectonic plates are always in motion. When these plates collide at their plate boundaries, you get an earthquake. The more force they move with, the stronger the earthquake. Here's a fun activity that you could try at home to explore earthquakes. We're going to be demonstrating a de design challenge today uh, where you will be building the tallest structure that could withstand the largest earthquake on a shake table. In order to do that, you're gonna need a few items from home. We're gonna be demonstrating this with these items. Eli, give us our items. Um, we're gonna use graham crackers, frosting, a paper plate, and a butter knife to spread the frosting. And if you don't have these items at home, you can build your structure out of anything that you have on hand. Um, good examples of things that you could use would be spaghetti and marshmallows, straws and tape, um, any version of tape. You can use index cards and paper and tape and glue. Really anything that you have at home your family could use to complete your design.
So now that you've built your structure, you're going to test your structure on a shake table. And the shake table that we're going to demonstrate with it is a skateboard shake table. What you will need is a long table, you will need a skateboard, and you will need two bungee cords. You could even get the elastic cord without the hooks on it and just tie it to the skateboard and the table. If you don't have these items at home, you can make a shake table out of cardboard, two plastic water bottle lids, two marbles, and two rubber bands. So what you will do is glue the water bottle lids to the bottom layer of cardboard. Once it's dry, you'll place your two marbles inside, line up your top cardboard piece, and then put rubber bands on each side. And then you hold the bottom layer, you can place your structure on top, and you pull back and, re and release. how to assemble this skateboard shake table. You might want to wear goggles for this activity and be extremely careful if you don't tie the bungee cord on right, it could fly off and hurt you. So you're going to hook it to the truck so tie it around the trucks or the axle of the skateboard. One on each side. And you're going to hook it to the underside of the table. Make sure that it's anchored well again so it does not fly off and hurt somebody. You can hook it to the legs of the table or there's these little bars going across the top that it hooks well on on this table. Every table is different so just find a secured spot. When you are ready, you will place your structure on top of the skateboard or on top of the cardboard shaped table. You are going to pull back slightly you might want to use binder clips to anchor the structure down if it's on a paper plate or piece of paper. And you can, the more gentle you pull back on it, it's going to resemble a um, less strong earthquake. And the harder you pull back on it and release, the stronger the shaking. Did you have fun building your structures? Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we should have used spaghetti and paper. This is messy, but it was still pretty delicious. Let's start testing. And starting first, and it's maybe going to be scary. All right, so in order to test your structure, you're going to take it and place it on the center of the skateboard. You're going to take your two binder clips and clip the edges of the paper. To hold it in place. Now we're going to start out by modeling a small earthquake first. So we're going to gently pull back on the skateboard and release. Are you ready? Yeah. Go on. Oh, there it is, gentle. It survived. And then you can gradually pull back and make it stronger. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, good job, Gavin. Should we give it one more big pull? Mm -hmm. Bigger, 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 way bigger. Bum, 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 bum. Pull it! I'm ready for yours to collapse. Why? It's not nice. And the winner is... Yay! But at least after you do it, if it collapses or not, you can dig right in after. I think the science behind this is how delicious it is. Positive. Mm. So what's the science behind this? The stronger the earthquake, the more likely there will be structural damage. When an earthquake happens, seismic waves radiate out from the epicenter of the earthquake. Places and structures that are closer to the epicenter will be more affected than places that are further away from the epicenter because the seismic waves lose energy as they radiate out from the epicenter of the earthquake. Now this skateboard shake table was not a perfect shake table because it only allows us to test the horizontal component of the seismic waves. But it's a really fun activity to try at home. Thanks for tuning into this channel.
And don't forget to subscribe to Storytime Science. And don't forget to post pictures of your activities on your favorite social media with the hashtag AVUSD Storytime Science.